Hey guys! I'm not 100% sure, but this may be my last wrap up of the year because I'm planning on focusing more on writing than reading, at least until January rolls around. Then, I don't know, it depends on how I'm feeling. I'm going to start off today by going over like the majority of the manga that I've read. And I mean, I'm sure you guys probably don't care about that, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But to start things off, I have volumes 29 through 42 of Prince of Tennis. And this, I officially have finished the Prince of Tennis series. Now there is new Prince of Tennis that is still an ongoing series that I haven't even started. And a part of me wonders if I'm even going to start that series because, I mean, it, Considering how long it took for this one to finish, and how many volumes it is, it's, that's going to be such a hassle. I don't even know how many volumes New Prince of Tennis is right now. Um, there are a few differences between the manga series and anime series that I find half of them I like more in the anime, and the other half I like more in the manga. I don't know, it's a toss-up between the two. But I really did love this series. I highly recommend it to anyone who likes the sport tennis, and has a lot of time on their hands. I mean, I recommend both the anime and the manga series. Both are incredibly long. You know, set aside a, like a couple weeks to finish all of it. Um, I think my only negative thing to say about it is the fact that Sakuno needs to go fall in a hole that leads to another country outside of Japan. That way we don't have to see her anymore. Next up, I read the first four volumes of Haiku. I'm pretty sure volumes one and two were rereads for me but I wanted to start from the very beginning and I read the first 46 pages of volume 5 and I was planning on reading all the way to the end of the enter high this page 46 is like right before the enter high starts I'm not exactly sure how many volumes is in the enter high but it's like I know at least two or three games that they play so I plan on getting that far in and it's just I started writing and I just never picked this back up because I've set this down so I could read a few books that I'm about to get to but it's like I will I told myself I was like I'll pick this up after I finish those books and while I was reading those other books I got into a writing mood so I've been planning a few things in my writing and actually you know physically doing some writing but I don't know I plan on getting back to this I don't know if it'll be any time this year but I do plan on reading this entire series Oh, I didn't get ratings for any of these books. I think the majority of the Prince of Tennis series got like four out of five stars. I think there was like one or two that got five out of five stars. And all of these, I think so far, have gotten five out of five stars. Because, I mean, it could be just because I love Haiku, I love the characters. There is not a single character in this book series, even the real jerks in the series, that I don't like. I mean, there's a couple that I haven't even read yet in the manga series that creep me out a little bit, but that's because they look like a funhouse clown. But I mean, I don't outright dislike them or hate them in any way. So time to get to the books I've read. First up is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I decided to read this book after I read The Coldest Girl in Cold Town. I knew I was going to read it before I started The Cruel Prince because um, I've heard that there is a character in The Cruel Prince that is in this book. So I'm very interested to find out who that character is and I hope I remember everything when I go to read The Cruel, P Cruel Prince because I'm planning on letting like at least closer to the third book's release date before I actually start that series. This book ended up getting a 4 out of 5 stars and I was kind of questionable about giving it that rating because it took about 170 some pages for me to like, for the story to really pick up, for me to like really get into it. But once it did, I really couldn't stop reading. I loved the story. I loved at least like the majority of the characters. There were a couple of characters that just made me roll my eyes and like, why do you exist? There was a few cons. I mean, the biggest one being that there was way too much useful information about side characters that were irrelevant to the story, I felt. The next con is kind of spoilery. I'm gonna try to... I'm gonna try not to spoil anything, but towards the end of the book, what Hazel has went through, um, when she remembers certain parts of what's going on, 
she recovers way too quickly from how traumatic that would actually be or how I felt that it would be. I mean, because your brain's being assaulted. Though I just, I feel like there should have been a lot more repercussion in that. And then the only other con I can really think of is the fact that there was a declaration of love like mid fight. It's like you couldn't save it until after the fight was over. You were nowhere near dying. There was no need for a declaration of love like right in the middle of this fist fight or sword fight, sorry. Not a fist fight. There were a couple things that I wouldn't necessarily have changed, but I would have liked to know more about Jack's character and Severin. I think that's how you say his name. They're considered main characters, but we know little to nothing about them. Besides a couple of flashbacks and what they share with the other main characters towards the end of the book. And while that was frustrating, I did take into account that this is a standalone, so I mean there's only so much character development you can do. Oh, and by the way, I did listen to like the first 50 or 60 page of the, pages of this on audiobook because I was uh, driving back and forth from, I can't remember anymore, but I was driving and I wanted to read some of the books and it's like I took that audiobook straight back to the library because that narration, I could not stand it. Now, this next series I read, I'm going to speak about it in two parts. That's The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. Look at these beautiful books. Now, the parts is the first two books each got a five stars. I, did, I don't know, it's just compared to the second two books, which I will get to, these books were far superior. Uh, the Dream Thieves, the Dream Thieves, I actually felt was more of a five stars and The Raven Boys was more like a four, 4.5 stars, like the more I thought about it, but I'm keeping them both at five stars. The main reason I think this rating should have gone down is because I hated 90% of Blue's chapters. It's like I was so done with her character and that was only like in the first 50 pages I was just done with her. I, I was like, no, please no more. Once the boys were introduced, they got better, but her chapters were only tolerable to me when the boys were in the chapters with her. If it was with her family, I, I was just ready to skip those chapters altogether. I didn't, but I wanted to. The Dream Thieves. I enjoyed the story a lot more than I did the Raven Boys. The plot was also harder to predict. It's like the Raven Boys, I saw what was happening in like 100 pages at least before anything actually happened. The Dream Thieves, it kind of left me up in the air. It's like I knew who the other Dream Thief was, but at the same time, it's like, how is this going to pan out? What's happening here? What's going to happen next? It's like, there was a lot of things that were questionable. I also love how full circle the prologue and epilogue was. That was very nice. The cons, of course, I hated Lou's entire family except for Persephone. I didn't care for her mother's love interest. It's like with everything going on, why are you falling in love with this guy that you've like literally met five seconds ago? It's like, if that's not instant love, I don't know what is. And then Adam, one of my favorite characters from the Raven Boys, annoyed the hell out of me for the, like the first 50 to 100 pages. It was so, I was so done with him. I wanted to go through the book and slap him. Thankfully, he finally got his act together and stopped being so annoying. Then we have Blue Lily Lily Blue and The Raven King. Both these books, sadly, only got a three out of five stars a piece. And on Blue Lily Lily Blue, I felt like I was almost too generous on that rating. But I kept them both at three stars because I did, I do love the story. Like the overall story, not like these stories as separate, but like all four of them together. Blue Lily Lily Blue introduced a few new characters, none of which I actually liked. I guess Mallory was meh and Jesse was actually pretty decent, I guess. Also, the thing with Persephone also irritated the hell out of me, considering she was the only one from 300 Foxway that I could actually tolerate. But somehow in this book, Blue became even more of a feminist, which annoyed me because, I mean, I felt like she had a good balance in the first two books and there's just this one, it just, it blew up way out of proportion and I could really care less for that kind of attitude. I mean, it's like, yes, you can be a feminist, but mm, some of the things that she said were just uncalled for. Blue's chapters were also full of repetitiveness and that was vastly annoying. That is probably one of my biggest pet peeves about the book is the fact that she would say the same thing two or three times in a row, but the wording would just be different. 
It's like, is this really necessary? No. A good example of this is when they were talking about death towards the end of the book, where it was both repetitive and made me ask questions like, why do these kids think you have to die with a ceremony to it? Do they live in reality? People die all the time and nothing happens. I mean, they just, they die. They die of old age. They die of disease. There's not always a ceremony to death. And why they felt like this specific death needed a ceremony to it, I do not understand. Just because they were important to you, that doesn't work that way. So why it was, re was repeated 20 million times in two or three different point of views that there was no ceremony to this death, that it came so unexpectedly. I mean, yes, it was unexpected. It did not require a ceremony though. So that triggered me in ways that I probably shouldn't have been triggered, but I've had a lot of death in my family and the fact that they thought there had to be a ceremony to it or death wasn't a thing, just, <sighs> I need to calm down. I really, really need to calm down. I understand that these characters probably have really, have had no one close to them die, even though Gansey's like, you know, had the whole death situation happen to him. But there's a difference between not experiencing it and having common sense. Other than that, the most enjoyment I got out of this book were the Adam and Ronan chapters. And really, I could read the entire book series and just their point of view and I would be ecstatic because they're my favorite characters, my OTP. I love them so much, even though Adam did irritate the far out of me a couple times. And towards the end, although I don't like Nave, I was also very interested in what her motives were for doing what she was doing. I mean, she been down in that little cave that entire time. That's gotta be lonely. Then we come to the Raven King and I'm going to try my hardest not to spoil anything for this book. But if I do, I apologize. If you don't want to be spoiled, just don't watch this part because nine times out of 10, something's going to slip. Um, but everything that be, we have been working towards never happened in this book. And I was expecting this book to be so action packed and just like, like it's so fast paced because everything was going to happen. It's the last book. Everything has to wrap up all neat and tidy with a little bow and nothing freaking happened. It was like the last 80 pages when stuff finally started to happen and it was so flippin' annoying. Everything that had been happening in the book with the demon and the forest and everything, it's just, it, it the kids completely ignored it. They didn't even try, or at least Adam and Ronan tried. The others, one, like, Gansey and Blue were going to parties and hanging out with Henry or Harry. I can't remember what his name is at the top of my head point is they were hanging out with him when they should have been trying to help. They were literally doing nothing. Why can't this series be about Ronan and Adam? Because they are the ones that through this entire series have actually tried to help, have tried to do something, have actually put stuff into action. Blue and Gansey have done nothing. They've been nothing really to me, like in the entire series. Don't get me wrong. I love Gansey. I do love Gansey, but it's like, what did they actually do to help? When you think about it, in this entire series, what did Blue and Gansey go off and do on their own that actually progressed the story at all? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a few things that Gansey's at least done. And I know Blue started the whole thing in motion by showing them, the, or giving them the coordinates in the beginning of um, the Raven Boys. But when you think about it, Adam's the one who woke the light line. Ronan's the one that has the special power that he does. And they use that to get bad guys out of the town to actually work and solve problems and find these places. And it's just like Gansey and Blue don't do anything. <sighs> it's, it's, it triggers me so bad. And that's probably why this got a three out of five stars is because up to this point, I was expecting Blue and Gansey to really actually do something. And they did nothing. They went to a toga party. That triggered me so much considering they're the main characters and they've done nothing also on a side note their their romance i mean was unbelievable to me in the beginning i didn't like it but can they kiss now because technically if Cavs water did what it did gansey still is the, the way he is and that's why blue could kill him with her kiss or whatever i mean wouldn't that still be a thing so can they still not kiss that that was never really explained because I'm, as, I'm assuming that the same concept would apply, but um, I'm, I guess we're just going to assume that it doesn't. And I will say, 
the one thing I do like about Blue is her interactions with Ronan. I feel like they had a good chemistry, a good friendship. I really did enjoy their moments. But like I said before, I would read 10 books about Ronan and Adam. I would never get tired of it. They wouldn't even have to do anything dangerous or action-packed. They could just be living their lives, you know, being them. I'm sure Ronan would cause a lot of drama anyways. But, I mean, to me, they're the main characters. They're the ones that did the majority of everything that had happened in the series. And they're just the cutest couple ever to me. So I probably triggered so many people by that. I know like the vast majority love these books. They love the characters, especially Blue and I just, I, I can't like Blue. I'm sorry. I tolerated her and that was basically it. Found the romance between her and Gansey completely unrealistic and, but mainly just on Gansey's side. I don't see how Gansey could like her at all because I mean, it wasn't just the fact that she, like 90% of what Gansey said she went feminist mode on him and snapped at him and was downright rude in some aspects, especially since he didn't understand what he said was offensive. And there was a couple of things that she snapped at him for that I wasn't even sure why she was offended by it. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I understand why she liked him, but I don't understand why he liked her at all. I don't understand why Adam liked her either. But I really have to stop talking about these books because I can rage about them especially the relationship between Blue and Gansey and Blue's family and Blue in general. And sometimes Gansey. Gansey can be pretty annoying in the book. But I can rage about those characters for hours because they just, they triggered me so bad. But I want to leave this off on a positive note. So, at least in this last book, a couple of my least favorite characters died. But yes, those were all the books that I've read since my last wrap up. I'm not even sure when that was. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and as long as you don't unsubscribe, I will see you guys next time. Bye!